Hello, everyone. Thanks for this introduction. So I am Francois Farquet. I work uh, at Oracle Labs in uh, Zurich uh, as a senior researcher in the GraalVM team. And today, I will try to convince you that if you use GraalVM, you will be able to run your programs faster. Not only Scala, as my t-shirt says, but any program. OK, so it's early in the morning. Uh, I want to wake you up a little bit. And I have three Java functions here. And I want to do a little quiz, a little survey. Which one of these functions do you think will be the fastest, will run the fastest? So they all neg negate an, an integer that is given as an argument. And um, if you think that negate 1 will be faster, please raise your hand. OK, quite a few people. And if you think that negate 2 will be faster, the fastest, not much. Uh, and if you think that negate 3 will be the fastest, please raise your hand. If you think that negate 3 can run as fast as the other ones, raise your hand. Ah, a bit more. OK, so before answering that question, Let's step back and think about how we run Java code. We run Java code using a JVM, OpenJDK, or any other alternative. And how the JVM works is that it starts by interpreting your code. So it's a fairly, it's fairly slow process. But it gathers a lot of statistics while it runs in interpreter mode. And in the end, uh, it decides, it says, oh, this function has been called many, many times. So I consider it, this function a, a hot method or hot code. And uh, it dis the JVM decides to give that function to the, um, the compiler. And the compiler will produce highly optimized machine code for that function. So when one of those functions gets hot, the compiler will see that. and try to generate machine code for that. For negate 1, it's, a, it's straightforward. It's very simple instructions. And for negate 2, the compiler will look at the code and say, OK, this extra allocation in integer b equals a plus 0, you can get rid of the 0. b equals a, you can replace a uh, directly in the return statement. You can get rid of the, the multiplication. And the compiler does that for you. And in the end, the machine code that is produced by the JVM is exactly the same in that you have in negate 1. And that's a very simple optimization. Now, negate 3 is trickier. Not, um, not sure all JVM can optimize that uh, properly. But because you have object allocations, which is a big thing in, uh, in, in the JVM, and you have array allocation, and you have a cast. So that, that's tricky to handle. And um, in GraalVM, what, you can, what the, the compiler does here is does advanced escape analysis. And escape is in a, it's a phase of the compiler where it, it, it figures out that the object is not used anywhere else and, um, and that you can get rid of it and only return the, um, the negate of the input directly without doing all those fancy object allocations. So the answer to the original question is that, at least if you run GraalVM, all those three functions will give you the exact same performance um, uh, after compilation. But since it's not a general case, uh, this is a tweet from this summer from uh, Chris Newland, who is a highly respected guy in the Java community, the author of the book called Optimizing Java, um, that I recommend, by the way. He tweeted that, I tell my developers that hot code, meaning those hot methods, um, should look like it was written by my nine-year-old. No functional or advanced object orientation. And as a compiler constructor team, we feel bad when we read this because it means that we're failing at something. Because nowadays, we use high-level frameworks. We love object orientation. And even if it's under hot pass or not, we want to be able to produ produce highly optimized machine code for it. And this has been the vision for GraalVM since the very beginning. Uh, it's a project that started eight years ago. And abstractions should be without performance regret. So. Let's dive a bit into what GraalVM is. So GraalVM can run any JVM language, Java, Scala, 
groovy Kotlin closure. Uh, but it's a compiler that can also run Ruby or Python JavaScript. And also, interestingly, native languages like C, C++, or R, or, or Rust. And um, those languages can all run in the context of OpenJDK, so being JIT compiled, as I explained before. But they can also run in the Node.js platform. They can also run in the Oracle data database. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's called the Oracle, uh, Oracle database multilingual engine. There, so you can run those languages directly close to your data, so you don't have to bring the data out of the database and push them back again. And you can also create native images, create standalone binaries that, that will not do just-in-time compilation. It's, a, it's a ahead of time compiler. So with GraalVM, now you have a choice. Instead of running on the JVM in JIT mode, you can compile ahead of time. So GraalVM comes in two flavors. The community edition, which is completely free for development and production use. Um, and uh, you can do, it's fully open source. You can download the source on GitHub. And um, there is an enterprise edition, which is basically the same thing, but with extra performance and uh, some uh, uh, extra security features. And um, also all the Oracle product uh, support you may have with uh, uh, the guarantee that someone will answer the phone in an hour if you have an issue. So. And, and the, the Enterprise Edition, what's interesting, it's also, it's also free on the Oracle Cloud. So you can, uh, if, you use, if you're an Oracle Cloud user, you have it there. And uh, at Oracle Open World two weeks ago, uh, Oracle announced that there is now uh, a free tier uh, on, on the Oracle Cloud. So basically, you can use up to two VMs and a few database instances for free. So basically, you can use the free tier and use the free enterprise there. So basically, you can run Enterprise for free. OK, so since my talk is about performance, what is performance? This is not so obvious as we would imagine. Usually when we think about performance, we think about peak throughput. It's like if you run your program for long enough, um, what is the best performance I get in terms of operations per second, or number of requests I can serve per second? But you may also be very interested in in reducing your max latency. It means the worst time to serve a single request. You may also care about how much time you need to start up your application. You may also care about how much memory it consumes in the cloud environment. You want to be able to deploy your container to start them very quickly. You want uh, a very low memory footprint, because then you, you are charged based on the amount of memory you use. So this is an important metric you want to optimize for um, in the context of cloud, for instance. The packaging size is also interesting for uh, container environments because the smaller the, the, the container, uh, the easiest is to, uh, to work with it. So a just-in-time compiler, like OpenJDK, GraalVM, or any other JVM, tends to optimize things that way, since GraalVM is is uh, built on top of OpenJDK for the JIT mode. Um, uh, it it's also has the, the cost in terms of startup speed, because you have to start this old uh, machinery, the JVM. It has a big memory footprint, because it loads the JDK and many things. And you have to ship the JVM with your, with your application. But if you do that, you have a very high throughput, since your application will run for um, in interpreter mode with all these statistics being gathered and profile being gathered and, uh, and highly optimized machine code can be produced. And this will also reduce your latency. Now let's talk about ahead of time compiler. Ahead of time compiler, this is the current situation with GraalVM. Uh, just in with the just-in-time compiler, giving better throughput and, uh, and, um, and smaller latency. Um, but in AOT, you optimize for the other metric. So basically, you have a very quick startup speed because everything is pre-compiled, and you don't need to, to start a JVM. So the, the other two metrics, uh, like memory footprint and packaging size, 
are also very interesting. OK, so I detail a bit these two modes. If you want to run JVM languages in JIT mode, it's like it's the same thing as you're used to. You just do Java my class, and it runs. Same thing. So you just have to change your Java home environment variable or put Java on your path and, and, and work directly with, uh, with GraalVM instead of OpportunityK. What's new is if you use the AOT mode, we have a new command line tool called Native Image. You give it your class. It does all the analysis of, of your code ahead of time. It compiles it, creates a binary that you can execute directly. What's especially interesting is that you don't need any JVM anymore. You can ship that binary, uh, and, and, um, and you don't need those hundreds of megabytes uh, to carry with you. So let's see if the little demo works. OK, that's what I've done here. I've just changed, uh, I've added GraalVM home as my, uh, uh, as an environment variable. I put that to the path such that um, I have the Java, Java C uh, native image from uh, GraalVM. It's the GraalVM Community Edition 19.2, which is the latest one. I want to demonstrate another use case. Here I have a, uh, a file called listdir, which is a very simple Java program that walks through your directory and its subdirectories and counts the number of files uh, and sums up the size of all files. So now this is just for demo example, but it shows you that, interesting, this touch bar has no escape button anymore. OK. OK. So now if I do Java C, OK, I compile it. And what you expect OK, and it works through my dummy directory, which has 344 files, and gives me the output, which is perfectly fine. It's how you use to run JVM-based languages. Now, if I use native image on the, um, with the class name, um, yeah, so you need to, to build with Java C first, and, and using the bytecode, it will not connect to build the build server, which is interesting. <laughs> what happened? Interesting. There is a way not to use a build server, so I'll try that. OK, that works. Um, so it, it spent some time analyzing the code and um, listing all the classes that are reachable, because it's ahead of time, so you need to know uh, what is available uh, at build time already. So Java and Scala are highly dynamic. You could technically load classes at runtime, uh, but it's not something uh, we want to support in AOT mode, because if you want to produce highly optimized machine code ahead of time, you need to know everything in advance. So you need to have all classes available. OK, so now I have, um, I have a new file here, which is an executable. And I can do list here, my dummy directory, and it produces, it produces the same output. That's not very ent entertaining, but now what we can do is you can compare how much time it took to run these two. That was for the Java one. And this is for the other one. And interestingly, it's 10x faster. If you see it. OK. So, and the second one has no need for any, uh, any JVM. It's just a little binary, and it doesn't use a lot of CPU cycles compared to JV JVM that has to boot and, and use all that memory, and, and it, it's painfully slow. So this is for a dummy example, but you have already a, an overhead, which is quite high. It's 10x higher. So if you would use, um, if you would use native image, then you would not need that JVM and get a much smaller packaging size, much smaller memory footprint. What we can have a look at, it's also the size of that thing. And it's 7 megabytes. 
you might say that it's quite high for, for uh, this simple application, but remember that it's a standalone binary, and you could use that as, a, uh, you could ship that in a container. You could even use an empty container. You could do from scratch in your Docker file and, and use that. So you have a very tiny um, uh, Docker image, and, and you don't need any JVM anymore. OK. OK. So this comes at a cost. I mentioned that before already. Uh, there, are, there is this closed world assumption, so you have to know everything at build time. So you cannot do fancy uh, uh, dynamic um, class loading. You can. Uh, you have um, this closed world assumption is at build time for the static analysis to produce highly optimized machine code, and it also requires some configuration files if you use. Um, uh, reflections or JNI. Reflection is a bit tricky because you have to, it's when you, you pass the class name by a string, it can come from a, a configura sort of co configuration file or anywhere. So the compiler cannot always figure out by itself um, uh, where the, uh, which, met, uh, which classes are reachable or not. So to overcome this problem, uh, we have written a JVMTI agent. So basically, it's um, extra code that instruments your, uh, your JVM and that will collect those information for you. It will uh, find every time you have, um, you have reflection access or GNI, GNI accesses, and it will, uh, when you, the process exits, it will uh, dump all those, file, those um, configuration files for you. And then you can use that in uh, to build your native images. Um, I forgot to mention that this agent, it's, it, you use it in JIT mode. So you run your application as you would do with the Java common. You, you pass the agent, and it, it, collects, it grades the file for you. Then you use native image uh, with those files, and it works like a charm. Uh, OK. So a few uh, microservice frameworks have done that exercise already, and uh, Micronotes Io fully supports native image. Helidon fully supports native image. Quarkus uh, is al also highly bound to native image. And um, I've written soon Spring Boot support. Uh, actually, there was a talk of a night at Spring 1 in Austin where they announced um, experimental support for native image. And uh, we're very happy that these guys also are working towards uh, native image support out of the box. And here are the numbers I have for Elite and Micron and the Quarkus. When you start up those big web servers, I, I don't want to compare it. It's not a competition among those, because they provide different features. So look at those independently. If you start uh, using a native image, it takes a couple of milliseconds. Uh, but if you, if you run the JVM, it, it has to bootstrap everything, loads some, probably half of the JDK and many dependencies, and it has big uh, startup and memory footprint. So this is the startup, and this is the memory footprint. So it's basically 4x smaller uh, for Helen and Micronaut. It's even smaller for Crocus, almost 10x. Uh, I also have the red and gray bars, which compare JDK 8 and JDK 12, which show that uh, no significant improvement has been made over time in the JDK. And uh, we will never expect the JDK to, to be as good, because it's a JIT, and it has some constraints that native image doesn't have. OK, so I hope I convinced you to have a look at native image. Um, here is a tweet from a Microsoft uh, Azure advocate, Bruno Borges. And uh, he says, before you think about porting Java code to Golang, I strongly suggest you to evaluate GraalVM native image compilation. I truly believe that you will achieve the same desired performance with a lot less time spent in rewriting and maintaining a brand new code base. So I think it's big for managers, especially with, uh, to take a decision. Uh, do they have to invest a lot of time and money into writing something else in Golang because the memory footprint or the startup time is not suitable for container environments, for instance? And uh, now we offer a solution with GraalVM. OK, so this is what I showed before with AOT and JIT. 
Uh, this is the current situation in, in GraalVM, but our goal is the following. And to get there, to get the same throughput and same latency as we have in the JIT, um, we are currently working on a better a garbage collector because there is, uh, it, within the native image that you ship, there is a, a thin garbage collector that we have to ship with it. And um, currently, it's a very, uh, very simple serial GC. And, um, and we are working in integrating G1GC uh, in native images. So that will uh, greatly improve latency, and it can improve also a bit uh, throughput. For better throughput, you need, um, you need also, I mean, you see that there is a difference between JIT and AOT, is that JIT has all the knowledge of the runtime. And it can take a much smarter decision based on how many times things are called and how things look at runtime. Uh, while AOT has to guess and takes the, the compile things ahead of time and does its best, but it lacks this information. But what we can do, uh, this is an enterprise feature. You can use native image PGO instrument for profile guided optimizations. And what profile guided optimization does, it creates a binary with instrumentation code, and when the binary, I mean, and then you execute, um, uh, you, you submit some workload to that binary to stress it a little bit. And then when the process exits, it will dump all those profiles uh, very similar to what the JIT uh, has um, for knowledge when it runs to disk. And then you can run native image again with dash dash PGO and you pass those profiles and it will create a highly optimized binary based on the runtime input, but ahead of time. And this is how we can achieve a very high uh, throughput already with uh, native image uh, enterprise. OK, so um, this is a slide I sneaked in very recently, as you can see from the timestamp of my experiments. Um, this is uh, since the beginning of the week, there were a lot of talks about SBT and how slow it is for many reasons, for lack of parallelism, for uh, resolution, uh, dependency resolution and stuff like this. So I said, OK, I'll just give it a try. Set my Java home to OpenJDK 8 and run SBT package on Apache Spark, which is a fairly big code base, so that gives a good idea of the, the, the performance. And then the same with GraalVM Community Edition and same with GraalVM Enterprise Edition. And you can see that Enterprise Edition is 14% is, uh, roughly faster at, uh, at compiling uh, Spark with SBT. And the Community Edition is like 5, 6, 7% maybe than, uh, faster than OpenJDK 8. So you see that it's as easy as just changing your Java home and run SBT package to get already a performance boost. Then uh, you can also go the hard way, as we've seen on the, uh, on the talks this week, uh, to optimize what SBT does. And if you do less work, for sure, uh, you will get even better performance. But note that the gain in performance is mostly uh, during the actual compilation of the files. But SBT does a lot of other things. So if, you, if we restrict and look only at the compilation time um, of those, those source files, it's even higher. And we have a suite of benchmarks called Renaissance. And in one, in one, of, those, uh, in, in one of those benchmarks is called Dutty, which is the Scala 3 compiler. And um, the chart shows uh, enterprise and, uh, in red and community edition in gray, normalized by the performance of... Uh, of uh, C2. And uh, you can see that Dutty, for instance, uh, it's, uh, the Dutty benchmark is just using Dutty to compile a lot of files. And uh, on that benchmark, we are 20% faster with, uh, with Dutty, uh, with uh, Community Edition on Dutty, and 30% uh, faster with Enterprise uh, Edition on Dutty. So this, um, I'm reaching the end of my uh, presentation, but I just want to mention that those benchmarks are critical for us because this is how high uh, we uh, track performance over time. How we try to push the compiler even further to make it uh, compile even better code, and um, 
Yeah, optimizing for too few benchmarks is like over overfitting a machine learning, machine learning algorithm. You, you, you are biased towards your benchmark. So the more benchmarks we have, the happier we are. And um, the, um, we started uh, the Renaissance project with uh, several universities. The research papers have been published about it. And um, we highly value community inputs. If you guys have an interesting workload that you would like to uh, to see how it performs, or if if uh, if you think it's interesting enough for um, for optimization, we can integrate that in the suite, and um, and then it will serve GraalVM, but also since it's a project open source project, it will serve any VM developer or GC developer or anyone uh, doing tooling. Uh, so I encourage you uh, to have a look at this if you uh, have interesting workloads. Okay, so this uh, conclu I will conclude with the uh, I will encourage you to try GraalVM to download it, um, and uh, it's on GraalVM.org. From there, you can download the Community Edition or the Enterprise Edition, and uh, you can follow uh, GraalVM on Twitter or myself. And we are very happy to to get it feedback, and we are very responsive if you face any issue. So. Um, as you can see by the number of issues open, the number of issues closed is way higher. It's in terms of many, many thousands. So please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. So thank you for your attention, and uh, enjoy playing with GraalVM. Thank you very much.